After all, you're my wonder word. Word to your mother, my name's Steve, this channel is Frags to Riches. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I hope you're safe and well wherever you are, and I do appreciate you that you've decided to kill some of your day off by watching this video. Today, as the title suggests, I am testing, or I have been testing, my friend's favorite fragrance of all time. This is a fragrance that he swore about. He's, it's like his favorite of all time. He's bought bottle after bottle. It's like his holy grail fragrance, the one that he puts on a pedestal, and it is the number one fragrance to him of all time ever. So I kept thinking about Brian buying it um, because he's too far away, we don't live kind of locally, so it's too far away to kind of me to go and smell it, so I was gonna blind buy it, but then a lovely kind person sent me a sample of it. So today I am testing Comme des Garçons Wonderwood. So before I tell you what I think to this fragrance after wearing it for a good few days, uh, I'm gonna give you the official note breakdown that I found on Fragrantica. Now there's no shiny bottle to kind of show you why I do a voiceover reading the notes. So um, I'm just gonna read them from my phone. I'm sorry, um, lack of commitment, but I just can't be bothered to learn them all. Life is too short to roll sock balls, people, remember that. Anyway, so as you can imagine, there's a shitload of wood in this fragrance, but there is vetiver, sandalwood, there's patchouli, there's guyac wood, there's cedar, there's uh, agar wood or oud, there's cypress, there's pepper, there's uh, bergamot, incense, um, nutmeg, caraway, and cashmere. So that is the official kind of breakdown, well, the official breakdown that's for, on for Grant to get anyway. So I'm just gonna pray, I did spray this just before I started this video, but I'm gonna spray it again, just to kind of tell you what I get from this fragrance. Now, um, the long and the short of this is this fragrance is very, very woody fucking no shit Sherlock. So the bergamot that I mentioned earlier is obviously one of the top notes. So there is a very, very short lived citrusy kind of burst at the top. You get the bergamot right at the top, but it is super short lived on me anyway. It is like literally within a minute or two that dissipates. So there is kind of quite a fresh opening but that is not representative of the fragrance at all. Um, but you don't have to wear it to full dry down because that lasts like a minute or two, literally. And then straight away, it just goes on to the, into this very dry, woody fragrance. Um, no surprises there. Um, the agar wood or the oud is kind of very prominent, but it's not a barnyard or skanky oud. It's not like barnyardy or particularly animatic. It's just a very, kind of deep smoky uh, sort of oud that's very um, strong and kind of dry. So that is kind of what I get, but into the, as it kind of goes into the mids, you get this, um, so the oud is very prominent um, as it's very dry uh, wood, woody fragrance, and the pepper is there. So I get this, this pepper that is not, it's not really spicy, but it's definitely there. Like you can smell that there is a sort of pepperiness to this. Um, particularly in the mids, as it kind of dries down a bit further, again, that dissipates. So that's what I kind of get um, into the mid. And then as it dries down, the oud does settle off a little bit. It does kind of dissipate. And you're still left with this woody fragrance. But um, to my nose, that is when the cypress becomes a lot more kind of prominent. Once the, I think the cypress is there in, in the mids, but once the oud kind of dissipates a little bit and dies down, then the, uh, Cypress has a chance to kind of come through and kind of peek its head up and, and shine a little bit and it does become one of the more prominent notes in the fragrance to me. Now Cypress is a note that I've I never used to be that familiar with but since I own in Bulgari's Man Wood Essence a Cypress is quite a prominent note in there and it's, it's very obvious so I'm quite familiar with that note now and I definitely recognize that in this so I get I get the cedar I don't get too much sandalwood. I don't get particularly creaminess from it. I get this is a very rich, resinous, dry kind of wood. So I get the cedar, I get a bit of the guyac wood. As I said, the oud is there. Don't get much uh, sandalwood, but the cypress is very much there to, to me. And the cypress kind of gives it, as it dries down, and the oud kind of dissipates a little bit, the cypress, when it comes through, gives it this slightly fresher, because cypress is a coniferous tree, it's kind of, I don't want to say piney, but it's kind of like a slightly fresher, slightly kind of greener wood. It's a kind of more resinous, coniferous, kind of greener 
tree. So it's a, a slight hint of a green kind of fresh vibe to it. So it just lifts it up a little bit in the contrast to the more kind of dark, darker kind of smoky oud and, and the other woods there. Um, so you're left then with that. So it's, uh, I don't get much of the cashmere in either. The cashmere in this is not, it gives it a kind of smoothness but I wouldn't, uh, the cashmere doesn't kind of jump out to me as a, as a real prominent note. I kind of get it, that, like knowing it's there, I can kind of sort of pick up the vibe, but it's not a particularly kind of a prominent note to me. Um, but yeah, so I get this really dry wood with the, the cypress and the dry down being really quite prominent. So that's, that's what I get from the fragrance. All of that fucking blurb, in short, you get a very dry, um, slightly hint of green, very woody, manly fragrance. So to compare this fragrance to other fragrances to give you some sort of reference or yardstick, um, as I say, the Cypress does remind me of Bulgari's Manwood Essence, but that's probably the only real comparison with that one, um, is the Cypress being very noticeable in both. But what I, even when I first smelled this and the first time I wore this, what it kind of reminded me of is Tom Ford's Oud Woods, but without the sweetness. So it's a very kind of dry, woody fragrance, but it's not, I mean, as I said, the cashmere gives it some kind of smoothness to it, but there's not much sweetness there, um, particularly with the kind of pepper and the incense and stuff. So it, yeah, it reminds me of Tom Ford's Oud Wood, but you know, really without the sweetness. Not that Oud Wood is, you know, really sweet, you know, bubblegum fragrance by any means, but I think if you smell that fragrance, you'll kind of know what I'm, I mean. So if you like Oud Wood, um, but in many ways you want it to be a more mature version or more sophisticated manly version, and not that Oud Wood is a commercial fragrance by any means, but if you want to sort of lose some of that more uh, kind of commercial sweetness or, or mass appeal, I guess, that you might get from Oud Wood, then this is the one, but this is a very woody, manly fragrance, as I've said before. So as I said earlier, this is my friend's favorite fragrance of all time. He puts this on a pedestal. This is his number one Mac Daddy. Like, to him, this fragrance is the absolute dog's bollocks. Now, in hindsight, that is a very kind of British phrase. So for all of my American friends, um, if something is bollocks, that's bad. If something is the bollocks, it's good. And if it's the dog's bollocks, it's, it's really good. Anyway, I digress. So he puts it on this pedestal. Do, now I've smelt it, would I buy it? Do I kind of agree? I, I wouldn't buy this fragrance. Now, I like it. It's a solid, very manly fragrance that I've got no qualms wearing. I wore it and I didn't have any issues. I wasn't conscious of it. I didn't like not enjoy wearing it. It's a perfectly good fragrance, but to me, it's not, it's not the dog's bollocks. It's, um, I wouldn't even describe it as the bollocks. I would just say it's good. It's uh, half a bollock. I don't know. It's not a talcy bollock, if that makes you kind of wonder. But it's good. I, I mean, I would give it a seven half out of ten, maybe even eight. It's a it's a good fragrance. I'd re sort of recommend trying it if you like manly woody fragrances. But it just doesn't it just doesn't excite me. It's not a game changer for me. I wouldn't buy it, unfortunately. But if you like manly woody fragrances, which I've said 300 times in this video already, or you like oud wood, but you want to lose some of that kind of sweetness and maybe go for a more mature, um, sophisticated kind of vibe, this could be the fragrance for you. With regard to performance, I've seen a lot of comments on Fabrantico in Facebook groups uh, when I actually asked uh, some of the group members about this fragrance. A lot of them said it was short-lived. Um, I didn't get that, actually. The performance, uh, for longevity-wise, was sort of quite good. I mean, I... Smelt my arm I, after wearing this. I um, smelt my arm after about seven hours, and I could still very much notice it on my arm. It was obviously very close. It wasn't, you know, projecting at all. It was a skin scent, but I could still smell it after seven hours. So for me, the longevity wasn't really a problem. So I, I, on my skin, I didn't really have any issues. But a lot of people seem to. So just maybe if you're thinking about buying this, think about how your skin, you know, is, are you a type of person that burns through fragrances quite quickly or not? So that's something to consider. Projection-wise was more where this was lacking for me in the performance. I got about an hour of projection, of good, quite good projection, I would say, and then it came in and it was more very close uh, for the rest of that sort of seven, eight hours that it lasted. 
So there you go, that's Combe de Garçon's Wonderwood. Let me know if you've tried this fragrance, how does it perform on your skin? It seems to vary a lot. As I say, it was lasted all right on me, but a lot of people say it doesn't. So, you know, what do you think to this fragrance? Does this, uh, is this the dog's bollocks? Let me know what you think. And also let me know if you've tried any of the other Combe de Garçon fragrances, because I'll be curious to know. It's not a house that I've um, worn any of their fragrances. I'm very unfamiliar with this house. But the good thing is the person that sent me the sample also sent me two other samples of Combe de Garçon fragrances. So um, look out in the coming weeks, I'll test those and report back. So I'm looking forward to kind of exploring this house a little bit more. So thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of this video. If you did, give it a like, you know, there's no harm done, is there, in that? Um, and if you're not already, do please hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it greatly. Thanks again for watching. I will see you for the next video. Um, just to forewarn you, my upload schedule is gonna be just as and when in the next few weeks because this whole virus thing is turning my schedule, I don't know, my ass from my elbows at the minute, to be honest, it's just a bit crazy. So I'm just gonna upload as and when I can rather than kind of stressing myself out trying to stick to a schedule. So yeah, look out for videos. Um, if you do subscribe, obviously they'll pop up in your feed, so please do that. Thanks again for watching. I love you for doing so, and I will see you for the next video. Take care, much love.